Heist of the Century – The Antwerp Diamond Heist Let's dive right into the gang who pulled off the Antwerp Diamond Heist, one of history's biggest ever robberies, and nearly got away with it. The Antwerp Diamond Heist – This is one for the history books, and regular books, as it's even part of the Guinness Book of World Records as the Diamond Heist of the Century, which is no easy feat. So, what was the Antwerp Diamond Heist? Who pulled it off? How? And did they get away with it? Well, the answers are coming and we'll get right to the juiciest bits of the story, which all revolve around Leonardo Notar Bartolo and the School of Turin. Sounds mysterious, right? Well, keep watching and we'll unravel the mystery. Before we continue though, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on more of the greatest robberies in history videos. And now, let's get into episode 2. There are some legendary places on Earth renowned for their security, reliability, and general difficulty to commit a minor crime in let alone break into, like Fort Knox for example. Well, the equivalent for diamonds is the Antwerp Diamond District. This is our setting for the greatest diamond heist in history, and that's a big deal. The Diamond District sees billions of dollars worth of diamonds every single year. And on the 17th of February 2003, the phone call was placed that informed local Antwerp police of their Diamond District getting robbed. It was unbelievable, really, said Antwerp Police Detective Patrick Pays. It's unimaginable that something like that happens because the buildings are secured quite well. It really was unbelievable, too. The Antwerp Diamond Center was very, very well fortified and defended. The Diamond District Block has constant police and guard patrols, 10 distinct layers of security, with a built-in Doppler radar in the vault itself, infrared surveillance, seismic sensors, a magnetic field, and a lock with millions of possible combinations. And that very vault, two floors underground, was completely empty come the 17th. So, where does the infamous ringleader Notar Bartolo come into this whole picture? Back in 2001, the Italian master thief was paid a pretty sum of 100,000 euros in order to check out the vault and investigate how easy it would be to break into. All paid for by a jewelry collector Notar Bartolo had sold some of his ill-gotten gains to in the past. Leonardo Notar Bartolo, in order to evaluate the safety of the vault, used some of the money to rent a safety deposit box, using it to further store a certain collection of his own stealing. Once he had gained access to the vault, he used the safety deposit box as an excuse to conduct surveillance, observing and taking note of the vault's various security measures. This included taking some discreet, albeit key, pictures of the entire vault's interior. After several trips inside and careful observation, Notar Bartolo came to the conclusion that breaking into the Antwerp Diamond Center was in fact not in the realm of possibility for any one individual or crew regardless of their skills and resources. And that was that. Notar Bartolo was paid for his investigation and went right back to his regular illegal dealings. That was until some five months later. Leonardo Notar Bartolo received a phone call from the very same collector whom he'd investigated the vault for, asking the thief to join him in a warehouse outside Antwerp. This was of course for an incredibly shady dealing but that was Notar Bartolo's specialty. There in the warehouse, the collector met up with Notar Bartolo and introduced him to a small crew of three. And in the center, there was an identical replica of a bank vault, which was none other than the Diamond Center's key vault. Exactly as he described and depicted it, with all the small details and security noted. At that point, it became clear what the goal was. Leonardo Notar Bartolo, along with a crew of three men, was to rob the Antwerp Diamond District. In that warehouse, they discussed their contingency plans 
in their general plan of attack in order to pull it off. At first, Notar Bartolo was understandably skeptical, seeing as he was the one who declared the vault unheistable in the first place. However, the team had solutions to everything. The vault lock with literally millions upon millions of possible combinations shouldn't be too difficult with a lockpicking master and a well-installed hidden camera. The infrared, heat, light, motion, seismic sensors? Not too much of a challenge if you know where to use some women's hairspray and how to apply some basic electronics knowledge. The giant key to get in? Not a problem for their on-hand expert key master. Notar Bartolo was convinced and he was in. One condition, he got to pick the getaway driver, a man known only by the alias Speedy. He thought the rest of the plan through and believed it was doable. The collector and Notar Bartolo agreed on those conditions, shook hands on it, and got ready to pull off history's most amazing, daring, and biggest diamond heist. But this would turn out to be a costly mistake for Notar Bartolo. Now, you're probably wondering, why was Notar Bartolo selected for this in the first place? What did it have to do with his investigation into the vault earlier in 2001? Well, now is when the aforementioned School of Turin comes into play. You see, Notar Bartolo wasn't just someone who strayed from the path of righteousness and suddenly became a thief one day. No, Leonardo Notar Bartolo was born to steal. From his earliest childhood days all the way through his tweens and teen years, Notar Bartolo would steal anything and everything he could. And as his skills grew, so did his ambitions. With time, the small-time thief slowly turned into an international crook. He went from conning jewelers to establishing and bringing together the School of Turin, a group of thieves, all having specific and meticulous talents all putting them to good use to pull off the most amazing and ambitious heists. Since their inception, they've pulled off dozens of heists, robberies, and crimes, getting away with millions in the process. By the Antwerp diamond heist days, Notar Bartolo was in his mid-fifties and very confident in the skills and experience he developed and gained over the years. And so, after the mysterious collector, unknown to this day, had recruited him to investigate the vault, Notar Bartolo used the School of Turin's expertise and they created a plan to get in. He was already familiar with the vault itself, regardless of the paying gig to investigate it. He had often traveled to Antwerp after all, to pawn off, sell, or otherwise get rid of some of the diamonds that he'd stolen. So, the plan was on, the heist was a go. A few key things to note are that trading in the Antwerp Diamond District only takes place between Monday and Friday. Come Friday afternoon, all of the merchandise is safely stored away in the vault, and over the weekend the whole place is watched by a concierge, as the vault security was supposed to be tight enough to not need additional guards. And that was precisely what the School of Turin counted on. Over that weekend, the heist was carried out. One question the following Monday, the concierge who was supposed to be keeping watch admitted to have gone out to a restaurant for dinner and drinks, only coming back around 3 in the morning. Regardless, the vault should have been safe with that many measures in check, right? Before we get into how the robbery was carried out, take a second to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and share the journey of the greatest robberies in history with your friends. Now, here is what happened. A timeline of events based on what little evidence the police was able to find, as well as Notar Bartolo's statement years down the line following his apprehension. On Friday evening, the vault doors were closed shut at 7 p.m. On Saturday night, the crew got in after midnight, 12 p.m. Notar Bartolo lay in wait while four men entered the center from around back. First, they disabled the infrared heat sensors and covered the cameras in plastic bags. After they got in, they used a slab of aluminium between the doors and taped the vault door's magnetic sensors to the wall's sides. This ensured that the automatic alarm wouldn't sound. Then they retrieved a copy of the key to the vault 
from a small hidden metal box by the vault door. One part the police were never able to figure out themselves was how Notar Bartolo and the others were able to get past the combination lock, as it was supposed to be lockpick proof due to the many millions of combinations options. This was actually discovered later during Notar Bartolo's interview. He described a small, hidden camera that was installed somewhere in the vault during his initial investigation. Using the hidden camera, they were able to record someone entering the correct combination and got past the complex lock. Once they were past that, they used the key to get into the vault itself. They carefully avoided detection by the remaining sensors before setting about and disabling them one by one. They were in. Now, just the safety deposit boxes remained. This part wasn't discussed in Notar Bartolo's interview, but the police and investigators suspect that the team used custom-built drills made out of regular machine parts in order to break into the boxes and steal their contents. Once they got into them, they took what they needed and discarded what they couldn't carry. Come Sunday morning, 5.30 a.m., 109 security deposit boxes were pilfered and the crew decided that they were well set. They escaped the vault through a preset path, through a carefully planned exit, letting them out onto Antwerp streets not far from the Diamond Center. On their way out, they also took all of the security tapes from the cameras. Then on Monday morning, as employees came back to the center, it was discovered that 100 million euros worth of diamonds and safety deposit box contents were missing. The heist might sound like something out of a movie that was deemed a little too cliché, right? The coordination, planning and efficacy of these criminals was to be reckoned with for sure. However, their professionalism did not last. As they were making their escape from Antwerp, one of the crew ended up panicking about the whole situation, breaking down and leading the whole gang to park their car in the middle of nowhere in a Belgian forest. It was during this pit stop that a few bin bags worth of tools, money, diamonds, paper and some other contents were thrown out of the car, likely by the very same paranoid criminal. Initially, the school of Turin had gotten away scot-free. But once a Belgian farmer discovered the bags left behind by the panicked crook, the police were called and they were led directly to four infamous Italians well known as masters of the heist. It didn't take much or long to put two and two together and put the four of them away. In the end, authorities found numerous pieces of circumstantial evidence in Notar Bartolo's apartment in Antwerp one that he used to occasionally participate in the local diamond trade to pawn off stolen goods. The only DNA evidence left behind? A half-eaten salami sandwich. Leonardo Notar Bartolo was sentenced to 10 years for organizing and carrying out the theft. His other three teammates, however, were never found and to this day remain unfindable alongside the 100 million euros worth of diamonds. Even then, the only reason Notar Bartolo was able to get the 10 years was simply because he was proven to be the mastermind behind the whole ordeal. In Belgium, the maximum sentence for theft, regardless of the hall, is only 5 years. So the Italian really did pick the right place to get caught, huh? Nowadays, Notar Bartolo's a free man, and considering his past and expertise in thievery, it's very likely that he still has all those millions of euros worth of diamonds and that he's truly living it up. And you know, who's to say that getting caught wasn't part of the plan? I guess we'll never know. Coming up next on the third episode of The Greatest Robberies in History, we're going to follow a crew that got away with the greatest US cash heist ever 18.9 million dollars. What heist do you think it'll be? If you think you know, tell us down below in the comments. And don't forget to check out the previous episodes by clicking on the link in the description.